All right, all right. I like to ultra enhance my modular billions, and today I'm unveiling the third part of my boutique hotel. Greetings, my fellow bushy blobs of subatomic building blocks. My name's Hans, father of the plants, quarter of teal bricks, and as always, berserk for Legos. So this is going to be a slow unveiling. Each floor gets its own video, and today, I'm showing you the floor with the swimming pool. Alright, and obviously this is part three, and if you haven't seen part one or part two, I definitely recommend you pause this video now, open up a new tab, go watch part one and two. The uh, first one being the penthouse suites, the second one being the uh, standard guest rooms. Finish those videos, and then come back over and finish watching this one. There are details, explanations, the origin story, how I came up with this whole design, and even a review on the original set. All those details you're only going to get to see in those videos. Now one thing to note is I'm building a Lego city, a tropical Lego city set in the future in the year 2060, named Paradisa City. So all my builds are both tropical with lots of plants. I love plants. Many figures of Paradise City love plants. And everything else is also built with a little bit of futuristic technology, stuff you would see 40 years from now. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna point out all the amazing new details on the exterior, and especially what I love about this floor. Then I'll go ahead and crack it open and show you guys the interior. And last, I'll do a quick overview of the complex building techniques that I had to use to construct this floor. All right, we're starting on the left side of the building and everything looks completely normal. This whole floor looks identical to the floor above it. The building's been expanded and extended. I talk about that in my first two videos. So instead of three windows here, it's now got five. So let's rotate around. And here's where things get a lot different. Yeah. So now we're on the front of the building. So this is where the pool house is slash indoor garden. The main architecture has been changed and it is now a bunch of these Roman style columns. I did continue the peach adobe color or the light nougat down here on the bottom of the columns. And then the rest of the column is like a Roman or Greek style column. And swing it over to the right side. Here's where you can finally see the swimming pool. And one other thing to note is that this floor is completely open. It, all the fresh air can go in and out. There are no windows, there's no walls or anything. It's all just columns. So these columns are supporting the weight of the two floors above it. So that fresh tropical breeze, fresh air can just blow right through. You're getting a slight combination of an indoor pool and an outdoor pool at the same time. You're not getting hit with some really hot sun. And since it's a tropical environment, the fresh, warm, humid air that's blowing through. Now you notice the other thing that I did was all these hanging plants and vines that grow these bright fuchsia flowers. Now there's a tree or a bush in my neighborhood that grows these types of flowers and it's just smothered in these bright fuchsia colored flowers and it's the most beautiful thing. Every time I go walk and get coffee, I love walking by that tree. So here I just like to imagine there's like a little border planter and they're spilling over and they're hanging down to the floors below. And of course there's always plants that are growing everywhere because it's a tropical city. So swinging around to the backside, here you can see where the elevator is. And of course the pool house room extends all the way out to this balcony. And here I've designed it so that the swimming pool comes right out to the very edge here of the rounded corner. In fact, this is a very famous Instagrammable spot here in Paradisa City. Indoor swimming pool. It's got a spa, it's got some masseuse rooms. 
So here is the front of the building. We've got the elevator. We've got our pool room. We've got a bathroom and changing room over there. We've got two massage rooms. So this one is a double massage and over here is just a single. This is just a little lobby area. And I can't wait to show you guys all the details. Let's do this. So let's start with the elevator. Here's the elevator and of course we've got the trans clear and trans blue alternating. And again, that's a theme that you're gonna see on all the floors. Every single floor in the hotel also has a unique tile pattern. This was taking inspiration from the ground floor of the original boutique hotel. So we'll move over to this side first. Here's just kind of like an entryway. This is where you have access to the bathroom, change into your swimming clothes, or change into robes for a massage. Over here is a massage table, and here is just some massage oils and uh, scented perfumes or whatever. Got a little plant right there. And let's go ahead and take a look at the massage table. So this is my massage table, nothing nothing too fancy. It, and instead of making it realistically to real life, I kind of made it for minifigures specifically. So this is where their little face goes, and then this bar right here is where their forehead goes. And then this is designed to hold their feet so they don't slip off the table, as well as these side edges. So it's not realistic, but it is functional for a minifigure specifically. So yeah, this little pocket right here, that's where their face, they don't have to press their face into the cushions. And I just kind of chose a similar color scheme that you find throughout the whole hotel, which is the nougat and the dark orange and the sand green, as well as the dark tan. One thing I didn't mention in the previous video on the floor above is I also reconstructed this whole corner compared to what was in the original set. I found a more compact way. So I'm actually using a one by one by five column piece that is also brown to match the color of the, the windows. Now that I think about it, I can't even remember what the original set had, but you'll just have to trust me when I say it's an improvement. Yeah. Okay, so here is the double room, and this room also has the balcony with the six stud white door. So I think that's awesome. Like, you can come in here and do a couple's massage, and they can have the doors open and the fresh, beautiful breeze, tropical breeze just coming in. You can hear all the birds chirping away outside. So here we've got our couple that are getting a massage at the moment. It's a little hard to tell, but that guy is, is feeling some extreme discomfort with his massage. He mistakenly asked the masseuse to apply the hardest massage pressure. It's a little too painful for him. And of course you can see she's got her face planted right down into the massage chair. And again, we got little bottles for the massage oils and fragrances and stuff, along with some plants. So yeah, you can look in through the balcony and see them getting massage. This right here is a chest full of robes and towels. So if you open it up, you can see a bunch of towels in there. So if you come down here from your hotel room to go swimming, you can easily grab a towel, take to the swimming pool, or if you need robes, the bathroom is pretty basic. Probably should put a little bench in there so they can set their clothes down when they're changing. All right, so the pool room, yeah. I wanted it to also be an indoor garden, and so the gardeners have all these hanging vine plants all along the walls. So the whole room is just covered in indoor plants. And since this is a completely open air section of the building, there's a nice fresh tropical breeze coming through all the time. And maybe some hummingbirds will come in here and feed off of the nectar. So lots of little flowers all over the place. All right, so we've got our pool and it's off at an angle. It's parallel to the angle of the building. And over here is our little spa. We've got a nice deck. Come up a couple of steps to the deck right here. You have access to the spa tub as well as the swimming pool. And up here on this deck is a couple of lounge chairs. So we've already got a lady that has her cocktail drink and a bottle of uh, spirits or wine. And she's giving a wink over here to her dude. So it's another couple and he is very, very unhappy. He forgot to pack his swim shorts. She convinced him to wear one of her bikini bottoms or maybe he went and had to buy some Speedos at the last minute, but they're not regular shorts. And uh, he's extremely embarrassed, extremely unhappy. And she just thinks it's the most hilarious thing. And she's, she was uh, giving him a wink, but he's kind of just hiding over here in the corner and doesn't want to doesn't want to participate in anything. He wants to go back to his hotel room. All right, so there's actually a shower right here. And then over here, down here is another nozzle for showering down, you know, from the pool or the spa water. And of course, there's a nice little drain right underneath that. I got a little drain right here too, in case water splashes out. Now, both the pool and the spa are full depth. So there's no fakery going on here. So I'll just take that out, take this out, and you can see that 
You can see that the spa is full depth. It's uh, just like a real spa. There's bench seating all the way around. And you'll also notice that at the very bottom of the spa tub is another tile pattern that corresponds with uh, like all the floors. And then right at the edge of this little patio area, we've got some plants as well as some little blocks to kind of add like a border right there. So I've got a column coming up in the middle of the floor. And that's because out of this whole entire floor, this pool room is kind of taken up like around 60% and it's all just external walls. So thinking like a structural engineer, I decided to add a support column with the floors above it so that there's no, like the floors above don't sag into this big open space. In real life, this beam wouldn't be necessary because it would be incorporated in the floor above. I just added it just so the column isn't fragile sticking up all by itself. All right, so back over here is another chest for fresh clean towels or robes. And if you notice right behind the chest, there's a little cavity built into the wall. And that's because the way that the lid on these chests hinge open, they would interfere with the wall behind it. So you can't put them right up against the wall. Or if you do, you can't open the lid. So what I did was I just used a couple of wall elements right there. And so now I can open the lid to the chest. Yeah. Over here is the balcony. So anybody enjoying the use of the pool can just walk out onto the balcony and just hang out there. Enjoy some sun, maybe. Enjoy the nice fresh breeze. We do have some lattice fence work just for safety and as well as back over here. Actually over here because this is a raised up patio area. So yeah. And I just love these hanging plants with all the fuchsia magenta colored flowers. So here you can see the full depth of the swimming pool. And you can see the level of the water. And in fact, you can even see that her feet are not touching the ground at the bottom of the pool. She's actually treading water right there. So cool. All right, so when I was first building this pool floor, my idea for how the pool would, would look and the shape of the pool was a bit different. And one of those was that my thought was that this would be an infinity pool. So the water would come right up the edge and would be spilling over the glass wall. And then there would be like trains at the very bottom. There would still be plants here, of course, but the water would, would come right up the edge. I decided just for safety to just not do that, but also because I needed to use these trans-clear wall elements. I decided to use trans-clear because the water is already a trans-light blue, and so I didn't want to make it so that they blended into each other and you couldn't tell one from the other. And I just love how the swimming pool comes right out here to the end, and anybody can just swim right over here and just kind of perch right up there and just enjoy the view. And that's exactly what she's doing. All right, so this guy, he's like a young, teenager, but he just did a cannonball straight into the water, making a huge splash. Splash and there's gonna be a, a pretty big wave going through. And another thing too was uh, just right here in this little corner, I was thinking about putting a couple of chairs and a tiny little table in there so you can get some more people to just kind of lounge um, and relax. But it was a little tight of a fit and I thought it was not so safe to have it close to the pool. Here you can see that the wall of the pool is the white uh, profile bricks. And then I've got a sand green stripe running along that. I really like the use of the uh, two stud wide white tiles. Just gives a nice, clean, luxurious look to the whole pool. So once again, as I said earlier, this pool is built to be full depth. So I'm just gonna remove that real quick. Take her out. All right. So I don't normally like brick built minifigures or even like severing minifigures in half so that they can fit in cars or whatever. But I made it an exception in this particular case. I really wanted to use this splash piece as something that's splashing down into the water. And I thought a kid doing a cannonball was the perfect situation. So I made an exception and brick built this little guy. Would have loved it if there was a way to, you know, be able to use a regular minifigure and incorporate. It also was not so good in the fact that I needed the studs here on top with the anti-studs on the bottom, but you know, unfortunately. So, and then his head is just kind of resting right there. So not my favorite work. The fact that I've got a little minifigure doing a cannonball. I love it. And here's uh, how I built the water around the, the kid doing the cannonball. Now here you'll notice that I'm instead of the regular trans clear blue uh, bricks, I'm using the trans clear blue with little clear uh, sparkly stuff in there. And even though it's hidden and it can't be seen very well, I just love that this idea because if you've ever dived into a swimming pool and then opened your eyes immediately, you'll have noticed that there are billions of little tiny air bubbles that got created when you dove into the water and they're just all rising to the surface. So they're just surrounded in this cloud of tiny bubbles. And so I just love this idea of using the, the trans clear blue with the glitters. 
It's all in the details. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how I built the water. I can get this out of here. Come apart in pieces. I have to like angle it out. It's like really tricky. Too many things in the way. Plants. All right, so here's my brick built water. Yeah. Oh, I guess I should mention that. So my original plans were to have, if you see this gray area right here, this was supposed to be the entire swimming pool. And then it would have a skinny section of the pool that would go all the way down to the end here. The thing is, is that Lego makes very few pieces of the trans clear blue. To have the surface of the swimming pool go this way and then change angles and go that way, there would have been a bunch of holes or gaps in that transition that angle transition. So I ended up ruling that out pretty quickly. I'm really glad I did because I really like this swimming pool that's parallel to the angled wall so much better. So going back to the water here, I actually developed this for a different concept. And this I've developed for my, for all the little rivers that are gonna be flowing through Paradisa City. I was experimenting with a bunch of different techniques for having water that falls down a small little waterfall, like a short miniature waterfall. I ended up building this. So all my waterways are actually gonna have true depth. So all the little rivers, there's gonna be depth. There's gonna be the surface of water, and then below that, there's gonna be, you know, there's gonna be a depth to it. And so that you'll see like little fish in there. That's the way I can build uh, realistic looking details underneath the water. The other thing too, is that I can build openings so that I can set the boats down in there. So the boats look like they're at the realistic water level. It's always gonna bug me. Like people are just setting a Lego boat right on the surface. I'm like, that's not realistic. Like the bottom of the boat and sit on top of the water. So yeah, all my waterways, they're gonna have depth to them. And uh, you'll be able to see little fish swimming underneath. So I developed this technique for that. And then I liked it so much that I decided to use it for my swimming pools. So not only is it for this swimming pool, but I've also got another build that has a swimming pool. And that looks awesome too with uh, this water effect. And the nice thing too is that with these uh, one by two uh, trans clear bricks, it looks like the water has been agitated. Like people are swimming around in it. There's you know ripples and waves going all over the place. You know it's all choppy and stuff like that. So this big clear one by six by five window piece, you know, I thought about kind of using that. It would have just looked terrible because then you would just see these big giant squares. Whereas here, it looks like the water is you know has some agitation or motion to it. I'm using a couple of the Transclear headlight bricks to create these little supports so that it doesn't, the water doesn't fall down. And if you look at the bottom of the pool, you can see I'm using one by one tiles and dots for, you know, to make it look like it's tile work. And I decided to throw in some nice little patterns down there. So over here in the corner, you got some steps. And then running along this side of the pool is a nice seat so people can just sit down and relax. And then I've got these pieces over here to support the water, as well as to make it look like there's water in the swimming pool when you look at it from, from this angle. Using a bit of sand green, because that's uh, one of the official colors of this hotel. And I really like creating that little tropical flower. I actually didn't create that. I forgot where I saw it. I think I, think I saw it on an Instagram post from Lego. So I think that flower was created by a Lego designer but I just changed the colors, I, I use different colors. I just love it. Like, I just think it's so awesome that staying at this hotel, you come to this uh, swimming pool and just swim right out to the end here, to the very corner of the building, and just overlook the city, enjoy the breeze. There are any plants. All right, so this floor is one of the reasons why I increased the height of all the floors and that was because this is all raised up and I didn't want many figures to hit their head up above so they do come pretty close you can see there's you know just a little bit of headroom right there the other thing that I did was not only did I increase the height of this floor but I also sunk the floor of the pool down by one extra plate so I got the floor of the pool as far down as I possibly can and when you see the next floor uh, you'll see that it will have details that allow this to sit lower. Amazing. All right, so one other thing I want to mention about the exterior here is that this Roman column right here is actually jumpered and is kind of splitting between these two faces. So all these columns are uh, lined up with the windows, vertically with all the windows on the building. 
So every six studs, there's a comp, right? But then on this one, it's actually a little bit further because I've got it jumpered. If I didn't do that, it would have been a really awkward looking corner. So it would have been either the column was right here and then this would look way too wide. It also helps that these vines and plants are help disguising that. Okay, so now I've been talking about it in my part one and part two videos. And that is the fact that I'm very limited to where I can connect the interior walls to the outside. One limitation is where the windows are. So obviously I'm limited to only connecting interior walls to this two stud wide wall piece between the different windows. The thing is, is that uh, the minifigure world is compactified. Even with my slightly more expanded scale, I think my scale is probably like 15% bigger than, than what LEGO gives us. There's always that struggle to try to get as much as we can out of the limited amount of space. So there's tons of clever planning that goes into the exact position and size of all the rooms that get built. So it can definitely be a major constraint when you're limited to where you can put the walls. It wasn't just the windows that were creating a restriction. It was also the floor. So I've got my little demonstration piece here. Here you can see that I got some windows here and I'm demonstrating that it's only between the windows that I could place a wall. The other restriction comes in the fact that the wall also had to line up with where these hinge bricks could be located on these angle plates. So these angle plates are the, the three in one and obviously these hinge bricks can only be attached every three bricks. So here and here and here and across here and here and here. Having the combination of both those constraints, the walls could only really work every three studs along the angle, but also at the same time, you had to find a location on the wall. And if you go look at my first video of Boutique Hotel, you'll notice that in one of the penthouse suites, the bathroom actually has this awkward looking square section where I had to make the interior wall come over here, go back over here, and then connect up with this. So yeah, that was definitely throwing a lot of challenges, trying to create rooms in a very compact space. Now, with that being said, this is something that was completely unique. And this is where I have a wall coming off here. And then I've got another little wall here that's parallel to this wall. And then instead of hinge bricks, what I'm doing is I'm using the, the round bricks to overlap on both sides there. So I really like how this worked out. That was one of the things I ended up discovering towards the end of this whole build at the last second. And so if you notice that this wall right here actually cuts across the angle that runs across the floor. And you can see that it doesn't quite fully connect to the floor. But the fact that this here and this here lines up nicely with this angle. So again, this angle and this angle are based on the three, four, five triangle angle. So that worked out. Yeah, this might just be my most favorite floor. I love the swimming pool. I love how it turned out. I love that the fact that it is a full depth pool with water that's built across the surface. And to me, it, it looks and feels like a genuine swimming pool for the minifigure world. You know, and before this time, swimming pools were just kind of like these open pits or there was nothing underneath the swimming pool, but just this pretentious surface of water. Stay tuned for next week because the floor below this is not going to disappoint either. And on that note, I will check you guys later.